as software becomes more and more and more advanced, it just means that our job as video editors just gets easier and easier and easier. And that is one of the things we're here to talk about today. What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. Welcome to this tutorial on masking. Uh, and this is the new way of masking in Premiere Pro. So previously in Premiere Pro, we used to do masking in a specific way. Now the way we did that was we would have our video on our timeline, like we have got here, um, and we'd have our text in our uh, play area, so we would know on our timeline exactly what we were gonna use and where we were gonna put things. But then we wanna mask it out. And the way we would do that is we would select our text and then we will come down here to our opacity and we click on either the ellipsis, the, the four point polygon or the free draw mask. And we'd select one of those, for instance, this square. And then we'd end up with this situation going off here where we had these little, little lines uh, that we had to grab and drag about. Um, and we'd have to reposition everything and we'd have to make it all done. It's all done sort of manually and we'd have to make sure we had everything right. We'd have to make sure that we had no feather on there and so on and so forth, just so that it was a nice crisp clean mask and so on and so forth. And that, that all took time and you were sort of adjusting someone else's work because this square was already on there with these ant lines and so on and so forth. And it, it all got a bit confusing, effectively got a little bit confusing. Um, it is still good, that process is still good and it still works and it still works. It works fine if you want to spend a little bit more time and so on and so forth. Um, and it also works fine if you want to do the whole black bars business because you can just stick that square on and then expand it out. And it's a couple of clicks and you've got you've got letterbox bars either, either side of your screen. And I've got a video, uh, yeah, up there. I've got a video that basically shows you how to do that. It's an old video on how to create letterbox black bars back from when I think I was downstairs in the kitchen then. Um, however, that aside, there is a new way of doing uh, um, masking in Premiere Pro and it is ama amazing in terms of the things you can do with it and how easy it is and intuitive it is for your workflow. So how do we do masking now? Well, I'm glad you asked. So effectively what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of this mask uh, and we're going to leave our uh, text on our screen. I'm using this stock footage of a Vulcan bomber that I shot for an ad campaign for the Vulcan uh, last year. Uh, and I'm using, obviously just got a title on there that, that represents what it is. So how do we go about making this mask, I hear you ask? Pretty simple. Um, we can come down here to our tool toolbar. Now in our toolbar, we've always had all these tools and they've always been there and we use them for a variety of different things. We've had the pen tool and we've had these, the rectangle, ellipses and polygon tool for a long time. But now we can use these as our masks. So I'm gonna select the, the rectangle tool because I want a nice rectangle for this text to pop in from the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box across my text like so. Doesn't matter what color it is, doesn't matter what it, you know, what it looks like, as long as it fits where I want it to fit. So this is really, really simple and easy. Next step is we can hit V on the keyboard to get our mouse back. And then we're gonna to come to a workspaces and we're gonna select captions and graphics. Now we're in captions and graphics and we get uh, a couple of different options. We've got all these different things here, but you can see at the top, we've got shape 03 and we've got Vulcan Bomber. So Vulcan Bomber is our text, and shape 03 is our square, our gray square on the screen. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make that a mask and it's so easy. We just come to the bottom under appearance and we click mask with shape. And immediately, immediately it's transparent. And that is our mask. It's basically done. So what we can now do is we can nip across to the text uh, and we can go, ah, oh, right, the position, what we want it to be in. So let's add a position keyframe and let's scoot across a couple and add another key position keyframe. And then we'll go back to the original keyframe. So we've got two keyframes now and we're gonna go back to the original keyframe of right at the very beginning. And then we can start messing with the position. And if I alter the position, you can see it just disappears from sight. Go top and bottom, so it can come in from top, bottom, left and right, because that square is now, that rectangle is now our mask. So I can pull it back and I can put it here like so, and then we can do the usual stuff if we want to. We can go in and we can say, you know, let's have, um, let's have it as an ease out. So we go to temporal inflation, ease this in, and let's ease the other one out. 
and then we're basically in a position where we've got ourselves some great uh, effects going off effectively. So click on it, boom, up it comes, and we're sorted. We're away, and we're good. Now there are more things you can do with this masking situation, this new workflow, than that I feel like you could do with the old one. I think it's a little bit more intuitive and leads you to want to do more things with it. So we want to do more stuff with our mask than just bring the text on. We perhaps want a banner behind it or we want something behind it to sort of pop it off the screen a little bit. And the way we can do that is we just use the same process again. We just do the same thing again. So let's have a look how we do that. So we deselect our text and then we come up here to our toolbar, who's still in Essential Graphics. So we've got our square uh, uh, selected again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another square across the top of this. This time, however, with Shape01, I'm gonna change the color of it. So Shape01 is gonna be, it's gonna be red. Let's make it red because that's pretty cool. And why not? Why not have red? Because it just stands off. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw another square. So I haven't even deselected the square tool. I'm just gonna draw another square, which is just over the top of that, like so. And that's shape 02. And shape 02, I'm just gonna make that gray. And I'm gonna make it gray so that uh, we can see exactly what we're doing with the, between the different different shapes, basically, because you've got now you've got multiple shapes on screen and you've got text on screen as well, and you need some way of differentiating it. And this particular shape, it doesn't matter what color it's going to be because this is going to be transparent anyway. So essentially, we've got that selected and we're all good and we know what we're doing. We hit the V key and then we can go straight to Essential Graphics. We make sure that in the uh, edit section, shape 02 is selected because that's the shape that we want to make transparent. And then we come down to the mask with shape, click mask with shape and boom, it's transparent. We get our red square back again. So we now know we're in a position where we can see some of the final article of what we want to see. So from that point there, what we can then do is we can then come across to here. We can see the position in our shape tool. So we want to add a, uh, a keyframe there and then we want to do some shifting across. So what I'm doing here, just in case you didn't know what the clicking was, I'm hitting shift and then I'm hitting the right arrow key, which is jumping me on five frames every time I hit it. That just gives me a bit of space between it. I can then move the keyframes manually uh, and adjust them accordingly if it doesn't quite feel fast enough and so on. But that's what I'm doing. So what we'll do is add another keyframe in. So we've got two keyframes in place and we'll go back to the first keyframe. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the position, but we're adjusting the uh, left and right position, not the up and down on this particular section. So I'm gonna adjust the left and right position and that's gonna pull that mask clean off and it's gonna hide that red square. Now, obviously when I bring it back on, boom, the red square comes back in play. It's above the text down. What the heck? We can't see the text. That's cool. It's not a biggie, no biggie. We just grab the uh, icon in the, uh, in the um, video editor, in the timeline, and we just move that track to below the other track. So let's shift it across to the other track like that. And then what we'll do is we'll bring this text in just after. So we get this, boom. And there we go. We've got ourselves a little title uh, and we can do that and we can keep building on that and building on that and building on that and building on that and building on that. Uh, and effectively it allows you to just uh, uh, create your own uh, sort of almost animations, almost After Effects style animations from within Premiere Pro using just a couple of clicks and some masking and so on and so forth. And it just gets you a little bit more closer to where you wanna be without having to jump into After Effects. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you. And I hope you did like it and you can put it to great use and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.